Well, March is Women's History Month, and today we're highlighting an exhibit you're going to want to check out the next time you visit the North Carolina Museum of History. I had a chance to talk to the museum's curator about all it has to offer. All right, Raylana Poti, Chief Curator of the North Carolina Museum of History, thanks for being with us. Thank you. So this exhibit is called You Have to Start a Thing. Tell us first of all about the name and then what this exhibit explores. Of course. Well, we chose You Have to Start a Name because it is from a quote by Lillian Exum Clement, who was our state's first female legislator. Uh, she's a really interesting story. She was actually elected uh, in her primary before women could vote and then elected in the general election in 1920. Uh, she was from Buncombe County, and she came down to serve in the legislature. She got interviewed by the NNO here in Raleigh, and she said something along the lines of, I know that someday there will be many more women in politics, but you have to start a thing. So the team working on this exhibit really thought that was a great quote to encapsulate what we wanted to talk about and let people know about. Uh, the exhibit itself, of course, was created for the 100th anniversary of the 19th Amendment, which gave white women in North Carolina the right to vote. Uh, of course, not all women magically got the, the right to vote and equality was the passage of that 100 years ago, but it was a huge step. And I know the exhibit also touches on the continued fight for, for women's rights and inclusion. Walk us through that as well, because it seems that, you know, we're chronicling uh, kind of North Carolina's journey here. Exactly. We wanted to make sure that this wasn't just about 1920. So um, obviously only white women in North Carolina got the vote in 1920. So you have an ongoing struggle for decades before all women can vote in the state. Uh, we also touch on the fact that the Equal Rights Amendment uh, came up six times for a vote here in North Carolina and never passed. Uh, we move forward to the present day where women are still out marching and protesting for their rights. And we have one section that talks about even though women did get the vote, we did not have women in positions of power for a very long time politically in this state, uh, 1996, before the first woman is elected to a statewide office here. Well, wow. and as far as the types of items, what can we expect to see on display throughout the exhibit? I know there's also some videos and portrayals as well. Right, so the exhibit is broken into three parts. One tells that early national story, one focuses on the North Carolina story, and one part is about that moving on after 1920. So within those sections, we have um, items that were used by both pro and uh, anti-women and men who were involved in the fight, particularly in North Carolina. Uh, we have some items from some of those female politicians in our state. We have some of the propaganda that was shown at the time. And we do have uh, two video screens where you can stand and listen to actors who are using real words from the time period. Um, from newspapers, from speeches, from propaganda, sort of going back and forth with those, so we would call them self and anti perspectives on getting the right to vote. Pretty cool. A lot of important women's history here to check out. Uh, Raylana, tell us, is this an ongoing exhibit and when is the best time to come out? Uh, it is. It will be open through the beginning of August. So please come and visit us and take a look at it. It's in our lobby level. Uh, and you can go to our website, NC Museum of History, to find out um, our hours and all of our COVID precautions. Perfect. Great, Lana. Thank you so much for your time. We appreciate it. Thank you.